and welcome to another tutorial. I'm sorry it's been so long, but today we'll basically be looking at chestnut and I'll be talking mainly about colour and how to get the most natural look possible. I have had problems with lighter shades for the longest time, things like chestnut, palomino, buckskin, that kind of thing. Anything with a reddish, yellowy or orangey kind of tint, um, I finally found sort of ways that um, work for me and although I may talk about palomino in a separate video, a lot of the same techniques apply. So to start off with, I'm just going to show you all the colours I used to make this chestnut. I relied on an awful lot of mixing to get the tone I wanted. Now you really don't need all of these colours, but if you're into painting horses, a lot of these are probably worth having in your collection. So the colours I used were white, portrait pink, buff titanium, yellow ochre and my browns, burnt sienna, burnt umber and raw umber. I also used black and blue for the base colour, but I'll talk about that later. Now if I was to recommend just one colour of this, I would tell you to get buff titanium. I've only come across this colour fairly recently, but ever since I've bought it, I've used it in every single one of my customs. It's such a good colour, it's really really natural. It's sort of an off-white, brownish, yellowish thing, I don't really know, but it's, it's honestly great and it's great for chestnut, so buff titanium, get it. So the first layer was a grey base coat and I used a mix of white, buff titanium, black and a hint of blue to make this. The only reason I use the infamous buff titanium and the blue is to soften up the grey a little bit. You don't really want to start with a really metallic harsh grey, that's why I wouldn't really recommend using grey primer either. But this right here is actually my biggest tip for creating a natural looking chestnut or a palomino or any kind of colour, so it may feel a little counterintuitive to use a dark base tone um, when creating a lighter coloured horse, but I found that it actually diffuses some of those really vibrant colours, you know, like yellow, red, and orange, the colours you don't really want to show up because if you have too much yellow it's gonna look really unnatural so... Oh and you'll notice here how it dries much darker than when I was painting it but yeah. So somehow I didn't record this bit but basically I did another base coat this time with a mix of these colours to create a really light beigey buff titanium -y kind of thing. Yeah. And as you can see from here um, you can still kind of see the grey underneath and that's what I mean about kind of diffusing the colours. It, everything, all the bright colours become more muted and more natural, which is what we're aiming for. So I just want to talk about shading a little bit. Um, this is the part where you need to start thinking about where the horse's highlights are going to be. So just looking at reference photos, take note of where all the lightest points are in the horse. With this one there were five. So there was in front of his back leg, on his stomach, behind his back leg, on his shoulder and two raised muscles basically on his neck. And obviously this is on both sides and as I airbrush you'll notice me avoiding these particular areas more and more um, as I get into the darker tones. So we're onto our third layer now and you can see with this layer I've added a hint of yellow ochre and I do mean a hint, you have to be very careful with colours like yellow ochre because you have to remember they are essentially yellow and using too much will result in quite a lemony horse and I think this was one of my biggest problems um, in the past was that I relied very heavily on yellow ochre. It's a very good colour but you have to remember it is a yellow and when acrylics dry they do dry darker so if you can stick to buff titanium, do that. As you can see I've started using my browns, I used a little bit of each um, just to create this sort of slightly, slightly brown tone. Now one thing you may notice, I keep using the same pot for all my colours, like it's basically a little pot I mix all my colours in before pouring it into my airbrush, also because I'm using acrylics I have to thin it down with water and a bit of airbrush thinner so that it goes in my airbrush, but the reason I use the same pot every time, it's basically a really good way of creating a natural gradient, so I always put a little bit too much paint in the pot. So when I come to do my next colour, I use what's already in there and just add a little bit more paint to make it slightly darker. So in this case, I added um, a hint of all of my browns to make a slightly more brown shade than the one I had before. So obviously you do this over and over again and hopefully by the end you'll end up with a very natural, smooth gradient going from your lightest colour to your darkest because they're all essentially based on your first base colour. I don't know if that makes sense. I hope it does. It makes sense to me and it works for me, but I don't know, and maybe it's just me. So from here on out, it's basically just rinse and repeat. You'll see me adding more and more of the brown to get a darker shade and avoiding those highlight points I was talking about earlier.
So here we are at the end of the airbrushing session. I went in again with the airbrush to do his dapples with a lighter colour and then went in with some oil paints to smooth out those dapples and add some facial details. So that's where we are at the moment. Um, he's obviously not nearly done but we've got all the hard stuff out of the way. And that's also the end of the tutorial. I hope it was either interesting or useful or with any luck, both! I'm really hoping I can film more tutorials this year. I'm not going to promise anything because it's been really hard to find time to edit recently. Um, and if you don't already, come and follow me on Instagram and the Ratty Productions there as well. And I post work in progresses, customs, that kind of thing. And I hope to see you in the not too distant future.